The wooden forms that Stradivari used to make his instruments have been for the most part preserved. They're currently in a museum in Cremona, Italy, where he lived. They are solid wood and they have the internal information necessary to bend and place ribs around the body of the instrument. So they have the internal knowledge which has been put in them by geometry, by Stradivari. I had opportunity to see and study these at length. And what I'd like to show you today is one of the tracings I made off of one of his most used forms. It's called Forma PG. He didn't explain what the letters meant. They thought maybe Pio Grande, somewhat larger but his name is on it, and if you can look at this, this is my tracing from his wooden form. I was as careful as I could be on it and discovered later that no one had done this and traced all of these forms. There have been some photo uh, books uh, published since, but I'm not sure that even they were permitted to measure the forms themselves, even while photographing them. So these may be the most exact duplicates of the shape of those forms that perhaps even exist today. But I have used them through my career to make instruments based upon these forms and of course to study them further and understand how they and the violins made from them related to his overall theory of sound and shape. And we can talk about what that theory may have been, but I'll show you a bit more about the task of copying one of these forms. Start perhaps first with this. The Probigny Stradivari of 1716, which is in the Paris, um, was in the Conservatory Museum, and is now in the um, Cité de la Musique in Paris. Very nice instrument. I was permitted to study it with the same care that I was allowed to study the forms themselves. This one matched the form of PG, and it became my basis for most of the violins I have made in my career. It had the extra advantage of always being available to me any time I came back to study it further, because it was in a museum and I had access to it. The process of creation of, of a violin in the Cremonese tradition, that's to say, from 1550 to about 1780, was by making a wooden form around which the ribs could be bent and attached. When the form is removed, then you have the rib assembly, generally glued to the back is the way we were taught to do it. And then from there, you can create the belly and put it together. This particular form is not exactly what he left us because this is thicker than, and it's in three parts instead of one. The screws allow it to be separated so that the blocks can hold in place while the main parts of the form can be subtracted. Otherwise, you find yourself forcing the wood to get it off from, from a wooden form like this. I have annotated here what I found on this form. Uh, PG was written there. This is, this is the tabula. This is the belly side. Here we have Strad PG, and then my information at the bottom. There we have PG again on the form itself and his name, and the form of Garanda here. These little pieces of wood were created so that Stradivari could put them here 
where the blocks had been glued, probably as square blocks, and then trace around, scri uh, scribe around those, and cut until the blocks were finished. Essentially, what this is, is reproduced here. Put it on the form, and you see that the, the corners extend outside the form itself, but they provide the model to scribe around so that you can cut to that and come up with the shape of the corners. It's interesting that through the years, he used this form a great deal, and although this does not show it, the original had wood inserted. You can see here where an insert was placed because he had carved away so many blocks and ran the gouge down onto the farm that he had actually cut into the farm. So he rebuilt it and kept going. Far as I know, it was probably used more than any other farm in his whole career. And it has the date of 1689 um, in ink on the farm. You can also see here the little compass points, uh, compass marks that I have uh, described in, in some of my earlier uh, videos, in the Menuhin lecture in particular. So he had these forms out on the table, and when he needed to, he could refer to these little marks to show him exactly where the Fs should be placed when he was ready to, to cut that part of the belly. Most of these forms have survive very, very nicely. The cello forms are not in Cremona. But they may be in Paris. The violin and viola forms are in Cremona. The last thing that I could do with this in making an instrument was to make a template for the outline of the belly and back. This fits over this as that does, and it shows you exactly where the corners are to be finished. These little holes, top and bottom, match small holes here, and with a fine metal rod, I can attach this so it doesn't move, and it gives me very accurate reproduction of all of these dimensions. The question that has been raised in some of my earlier um, videos has been all of this, what shall I say, um, more than interest, all this determination to use geometry by these fellows to make their instruments and lay out everything. What was the point of it? Why would they work so hard? What did it accomplish for them? I think I have a pretty good idea why. I'll give you my su suggestion. And those of you who would like to pursue this with me, give me a call, let's talk. I would like to know if uh, I'm on or off track. But here is my thought. Most of the internal compass marks on the forms and then on the work that I have done finding the outline of the instruments tend to resolve themselves into Pythagorean musical ratios, simple whole number ratios. If you, for example, have a belly with F holes which relate to other parts of the anatomy of the instrument in these simple proportions, and sound waves are moving across the surface and being projected into the air, I would think that these short distances being so exact and so related to uh, the Pythagorean ratios would make the sound more harmonious than if you didn't do this, right down to the smallest details of the way the F-holes are placed on the, on the surface. So what are we talking about? We're talking about the harmonic spectrum of any vibrating object, whether it's a string or the belly of a violin or anything in the universe. 
anything that is flexible enough to vibrate tends to subdivide itself. The string is the easiest one to explain. The string subdivides into the half length of the string. That's the first harmonic. If you're playing and you run your finger up the string, it will suddenly speak without you having to press down. That's the first overtone, the first harmonic. But the string further subdivides into smaller and smaller subsets, all as octaves of the original fundamental sound that the string is tuned to. If you hear these, they are increasingly uh, faint the higher up the octave, the less energy is brought into it, but they nevertheless have an influence in the envelope of total sound that the instrument produces. So I think that the fact that strads and the other instruments of that period have exceptional acoustical qualities, mostly beautiful harmonic qualities, is no accident. It was designed in. In my bow video, I point out that the bow wood itself can vibrate, and it can vibrate sinusoidally and vibrate harmonically. Why use any other wood for a bow? The same for the violins. If you have two pieces of wood from the same trunk, one may vibrate better than the other. Which one would you take to make the violin? Take the one that is already musical and then go from there and add to that the interrelationships that are possible and still harmonic. So that's my answer to why they we're so careful with that. This is a precise replica of this form, absolutely, to the half millimeter, very carefully cut, so this would be preserved. Now, whatever intelligence went into this can be well, can be repeated. In, in, in a modern instrument. And that's been my experience in making them, having people play them, and listening to the uh, result. We can hear these additional harmonics. They make, if you will, an aura of sound around the fundamental that really enhances the beauty of the instruments. Thank you.